Okay, let's do this. Um, so I didn't know how to just do the rest of the video. Um, my head couldn't do the it's thing. I didn't know how to, so I just decided to cut right there and um, just to show the rest of the story in front of the camera. So when I saw butter at the surface of the water, I knew that it was something like really, really wrong, and I immediately react because. I knew what happened and uh, yeah he was the butter was looking for uh, oxygen and I could see also the uh, DT Trevor in the tank they were like spreading all over the tank looking for food so that was like a really big sign like oh my god there's something so wrong and then after um, this is what I saw So, um, what happened? There's like two things. Uh, it's a mistake that I did and just an unlucky event at the same time. So on day two, what I did is I just gave a little bit of uh, food and uh, not, not much, just to make sure like in case something happened, like it's not going to screw up all the tank uh, rapidly, like I was scared of an ammoniac. If, I wasn't sure what what will happen, so I didn't want to take a lot of risk. And um, every time that I feed my tank for the coral, for the fish, for the shrimps, I always deactivate the uh, the flow, I deactivate the the return pump, and all the stuff, just to make it easier for the the shrimps or the fish or the corals, especially the corals, uh, to make sure like they, they eat correctly and there's no like a uh, waste of, of the food. And so every time I unplug and plug back, and I do this every single day for all my three aquarium, for my saltwater salt water aquarium. But I forgot that time to put back the plug into the electricity, so the return pump wasn't on. So for 18 hours, the water was tangent. No movement, no air oxygen, gas exchange, nothing, and uh, it only took 18 hours to have this happen. It it went really really fast, and I'm really glad that I just look up my tank to make sure, like, is it okay? It's not just to make sure. Um, and I'm so happy to have done the water change like two days uh, before. Uh, without that, uh, the tank will be all dead, corals include. And the second thing happened also is I had a problem with the, the temperature that was rising and I didn't know, I didn't notice that the temperature was rising and this was not the, the heater, it's just the, the outside. We, we got like a new record of temperature in Montreal all the east coast uh, basically and during like uh, May so I reached like 30 degrees Celsius uh, outside and that temperature only happened during uh, like July August some something around that so this is like temperature that I that I get but like one two months from there so that totally caught me by surprise and my apartment being like on top of the building I'm super uh, sensitive to the high temperature during winter is like perfect, no problem, but during summer uh, I have to open the windows. Even my AC uh, doesn't fully work, so I just got caught by surprise by the, the rise of the pressure. Like we, we just break like new record and after that like it went down back to normal like uh, 22 degrees Celsius, something like that. So forgot to plug the temperature rise a lot, no gas exchange and the sexy shrimp just died. So this was during day two, day three, and I like I did water change, emergency water change to make sure that everything is okay to, to reduce the ammonia, uh, just uh, make sure that the, the tanks uh, stay healthy. And also I changed the uh, the carbon. I didn't show on camera, but I changed because I was scared of the the toxin 
and uh, of the didn't flagellate so I make sure like that there was like enough uh, carbon to absorb that and yeah so after that uh, the fourth day uh, this is where I just lift the box and this was the final day of the blackout and I removed the heater I removed the uh, the UV to make sure like they, they are not running the heater um, I was I, w I just wanted to make sure like it's not because of the, the heater that the temperature was so high so I just remove it and because my apartment is really sensitive I'm on the top floor uh, the temperature really rise uh, quickly in my apartment so I'm very sensitive uh, to that so I have to open the door to make sure like there's air exchange and uh, so obviously I install immediately like the ventilation like a small unit and after that I installed another uh, ventilation on the ground because it wasn't enough I had to evaporate way more than that. I installed like the air bubble just uh, before, like uh, day, during day three and day four, I installed the uh, air bubble to just make sure that there's like a uh, air exchange to make sure like the, the animals can breed because they have the bugs. So the, the air exchange is way less. And of course, if you don't have any flow, uh, it's dead. It's, it, there's, there's a reason why when you have like electricity blackout, blackout you have to get flow. Flow is the, the most important thing. Is the the critter live by that. They, you need to have air exchange. Super important. The light doesn't matter. Air exchange, air flow, super important. So I, I therefore I just continue with my plan despite like the the what happened, and uh, I just give uh, some bacteria to a new type of bacteria with like a gel from the Dr. Uh, Dr. Tim's. And I bought it like on Amazon, and that for me like is super cool because uh, the the gel lasts really long. Like you don't have to worry about like putting a little bit of a liquid bottle uh, in the cram every week. You just leave the gel inside the cram. It does the job. So uh, I just wanted like a new type of bacteria to see if the uh, they will fight better against dinoflagellate because uh, my Microbacter seven from Bretwell. Um, didn't work well against like cyano and dinoflagellate like it didn't seem to work that well so i just wanted to try another type of bacteria to see if they can like just out compete uh, the one that exists in my cram also on day four i didn't use my reflight uh, i wanted to make sure like i go like in a ramping mode like gradually step by step so what i did i just used the ambient light during the first couple hours so after that i use my ikea light and on the day five i use uh, the the light aquarium the reef light and I try to go like the first couple hours like go really slowly just to make sure like the crater are not shocked uh, by the light uh, so yeah um i didn't want to make this video uh it took me like more than a week before i just record on the front of the camera um, a simple mistake of just replug the return pump and that caused everything. Uh, yeah, it, it's my fault. I forgot something and because the box was on top, I couldn't see visually that I had that problem and it took me like 18 hours to realize, uh oh, like, it's wrong. So there's a lot of stuff in the crumb that are not doing super well uh, with the curls, like some curls, like I, I don't have high hope. Like there's some soft curl, like I'm not really looking great. Um, yeah, we'll see what happened. Um, I'm just letting my tank go back slowly, get healthy. Uh, the good news is I don't have Daniel flagellate so far. Um, no cyano also and I use also the uh, phosphorus and the nitrogen from Bretwell to just bring back the balance of the aquarium because I'm lacking of uh, nitrate and uh, phosphate phosphorus uh, a lot um, my tank like use a lot because the dinoflagellate the, and the cyano they just consume that those two like very heavily and they, there's nothing left for the corals so the corals like need to have those nitrate and uh, phosphate to be a little bit uh, healthy to get back their color their colors so there we go um i didn't want to make this video 
but I told myself that I will just record every single moment, every single action in this Instagram, even if I don't like. So it took 18 hours to lose control. Yeah, thank you for watching.